Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. As promised, we have part two of our Fritz team interview. We're sitting down with the microbiologist. We're gonna get into the weeds here a little bit. If you wanted to learn a lot more about your bacteria in your aquarium, this is the video for you. And by the way, if you have not seen part one, you need to check that out as well because that is gonna help you out a lot. Understanding the microbes in your aquarium. Thanks for being here. Right. All right. So switch gears let's get into what you're doing here with the nitrifying bacteria um what what is your general you know your day-to-day -day, what what are, you, what are we trying to do with our nitrifiers here at fritz with our nitrifiers we have we have a feeding process and then we have the harvesting process so our process stretches out over like two weeks so You'll have like two weeks of growth, you'll have feeding, and then you have harvesting. So we look at daily the dissolved oxygen, the temperature, the pH. We track the feeding, we track the growth media, because you also have to have growth media. And then all the conditions, the buffering system. So we're tracking all of that each day and looking at what the growth is. Okay. So a lot of the growth, we're, we're either measuring the ammonia concentration, the nitrites, we're looking at turbidity. Now turbidity obviously isn't the best thing because you can have alive or dead cells with yeah. turbidity, but we've seen like correlations with it. So when I'm gonna nerd out a little bit again, the sure. microbiologist, hopefully it. everybody loves nerding out. That's why you're watching this video. So you talk about turbidity. When I was working at one of the, or teaching at one of the labs, we, you can standardize turbidity, right? So you can take turbidity and you can throw it on a spectrophotometer and then you can do most probable number and you can kind of get, okay, if our turbidity I, is this. I, I hate M MPN. I, yeah. I hate it. So I'm just throwing that yeah. out there. Uh, <laughs> I, I hate that method. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of it either. We, we would do plate counts. So I mean, yeah. just simple solution dilution, right? So you get your turbidity and you're like, okay, if my turbidity is X, and I do my solution dilution, and I've got so many CFUs that I know this turbidity equals this concentration, right? Is that, or are you, I mean, you could also do some type of flow cytometer where you could just throw them through there and measure it. So super, super high cost. Oh, very <laughs> high cost. That's what I tell my students. I'm like, I always you know, pick, a, pick a quantification method, flow cytometer. You can get viable, non-viable cells, but you're going to pay big time yeah. for it. And they're very finicky because oh, you've yeah. got a, a system that is just running one cell basically at a time through a tube. Oh, and it's like pow, 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 pow. So, and the maintenance is, is a lot. So um, what is the, do you have any idea with these nitrifiers, what the generation time is? Because that's huge in the home aquarium. Like generation time for us in microbiology is how long it takes the microbes to double in concentration. And so do we know roughly what that is? I mean, you're saying you're growing these things for two weeks. That's a long time. I mean, I'm looking at this as a giant, broth tube, right? So liquid media, giant broth tube. So what is the, just even in the home aquaria at 78 degrees, what's the generation time on these guys? Usually it's around 18 hours and that's a super general, you know. Okay. So for a lot of our like testing and everything, we've gotten the equation down to within a four hour or a six hour process. Wow. We'll, we'll be able to calculate based on kind of the consumption rate because you get consumption, but ju just because you don't get doubling doesn't mean you don't get consumption sure. of, again, it's going back to that factory analogy yeah. to where you're, you're still getting your raw materials in, you know, even if your product isn't more bacteria. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're able to do a little bit of a calculation with that, but freshwater, our freshwater, you know, generation time is faster than our salt water. Mm -hmm. So we, we've seen that too, there are differences. Okay. And well, and that's interesting for people to understand. If you have an aquarium and you're putting fish in there and you're hoping that you're gonna do a fish in cycle without a Fritz Time 7 or a turbo start, generation time of 18 hours is forever. I mean, to give you an idea, when we do microbiology in the lab, E. coli in optimal conditions is like 15 to 20 minutes, yeah, you know? It's so super fast. Yeah, you can take a, a broth tube of E. coli, inoculate it, come back in 18 hours, like, holy cow, we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. When you're talking about a generation time of 18 hours for these guys, I mean, that's a long time. So if you're not using a Fritz Time 7 or a Turbo Start or a cycled filter, media, you're going to have a problem. You're, you're not going to just, uh, the bacteria are not going to catch up to the amount of ammonia being produced by the bio that's in that tank. So that, that can be a Yeah, an issue. and we've, 
We, we've looked at, so again, the, the, the doubling in generation time, when you have more in there, you're getting more consumption of those raw yeah. materials. So there's a combination of it being like the amount, the concentration that you're getting in, and also just the conversion. Right. So ours are optimized for like that process. Yeah. They are grown in an environment to where they have ammonia, they have nitrite, mm -hmm. and that's like all they use. Yeah. I mean, obviously you have the trace and you, you have the general growth media and everything, but they- Pumping them full of oxygen. Yeah, they, they've been going through this environment for over like 40 years. Yeah. So they, they are designed for like that environment to where you have those levels. And when you get levels like that, it's conversion like that. Okay, so I get this question all the time. Fritz Lime 7, turbo start. What's the difference? What's the, what's the use application for both of them? Use applications the same, same species, all of that. Uh, Fritzheim 7 is just a more diluted version of Turbo. Okay. So in a sense, it, that it, it, you're getting the same product, like the same bacteria, mm -hmm. but Turbo Start is more concentrated. So what I've always told my viewers is if you've got an aquarium and you're setting it up and it's a, a semi-normal stocking, Fritzheim 7 is, I, I've used, I am not kidding when I say, I've used that product dozens and dozens and dozens of times exclusively put it in, I've never had an ammonia nitride spike. Now for me, what I've told my viewers, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the turbo start is because it's more concentrated, if you've got a more heavily stocked aquarium yeah. that you need to get started, I would imagine in the land of public aquariums too, where it's like, hey, you know what? We've got, we've got to put some fish in here. The turbo start is probably the way to go. It, it's one of those things, if, if you have a heavily stocked tank and it's like an emergency, and you're like, oh, we need, you know, we, we need to set this up now. Yeah then you would go to turbo. But again, seven will still work. Sure. You know, yeah. it's just a less concentrated version. So right. you can absolutely still use like seven in order to set up a tank. And then I would imagine them with big volumes, right? If you've got a large volume aquarium, the turbo start is gonna be the way to go because you know, maybe that would be a little bit easier. Correct. So the other thing you can do is you can use seven if you're changing tanks or something or, or anything like that you can use seven for that process. Yeah. So if you're bringing over the filter media, you're bringing over the decoration stuff, but maybe you've got your, your, hey, I've got a larger tank, I'm gonna add some more fish, right? I've had it before where, you know what, my filter stopped. And mm -hmm. now I don't have my dissolved oxygen, my hang on back filter or my canister filter. And there's still gonna be some beneficial bacteria that, that make it, yeah. but a you're lot of that stuff the... has died out. So I, it's, I keep this stuff on hand all the time, right? The Fritz Time 7 is, like, is my insurance policy, so if I get a power outage, if my filter crashes, if I wanna add a bunch more fish to my aquarium, well, I don't have to worry about the bacteria, which has that 18 hour generation time, yeah. right? Trying to catch up and deal with a temporary ammonia spike with a bunch of fish I love, you add these products to Fritz Time 7 or the Turbo Start, problem solved. Yeah, you can, you can kind of think of it as like a supplement, but also it's one of those things where you have a fire extinguisher and it's break glass in case of emergency. Yeah. You're like, oh, I got this. And then, you know, then you can use it. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Is there anything, let's just say, okay, the turbo start, I was supposed to use a quarter of a bottle for whatever size tank that I'm thinking about, but I have first time seven, so I throw the whole bottle in there. Is, is there any point at which, hey, there's other things in that Fritz Lime 7 where that could have a detrimental impact on the fish or is it just, hey, you're just kind of throwing extra money you're, in yeah, the tank? Yeah, you're, you're, putting, you're putting bacteria in a buffer. Like right. it, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you have to really work hard to overdose a tank with that. Yeah. I mean, you, you would have to just, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of somebody who's, if we've ever gotten we we've never gotten it so yeah i mean i've i've taken like an entire bottle of turbo and like poured it into like a 10 gallon tank and it just turns brown yeah. so it like that that kind of you know thing obviously you know you're not going to like pour the whole bottle on a small so i've stress tested it and it pretty much just turns yeah. the tank brown well but, plus i mean you would want to do that anyway because you've only got so much food for the bacteria to eat and so half of it's gonna die and then it's like, well, yeah. you're uh, actually creating ammonia doing that just by putting way too much bacteria in there because you got yeah. competition going on, right? I get this question a lot. Hey, I got my bottle of Fritz Zyme 7, it smells. Yes. So A, is it okay and B, why? It, it's okay. So 
The, the interesting thing with biological products is there's a lot going on in it. So the smell you're getting is just different, that, like the factory analogy. Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting a little bit different products coming out. Yeah. So you can get uh, like a rotten egg smell, that would just be like a sulfur, sulfur smell. Yeah. Just because it has a sulfur smell doesn't mean it doesn't have nitrifying bacteria in there. So you actually have bacteria that are converting things into you know, different materials. So right. the product isn't bad, it's just a different metabolic process sure, going on. Sure, sure. So. Shelf life. So again, I get this question a lot. I know on the bottles, generally speaking, you have a shelf life there. And so what, what is that? Um, is there a difference between, okay, I'm, I just picked it up, I'm gonna store it in my bedroom, fish room at room temperature versus refrigerated. Is there a difference there in terms of the viability of the microbes? Is there a difference between Fritzheim 7 and Turbo Start? So Fritzheim 7 is like room stable. So it's room stable, I, I believe it's 18 months. Okay. So Turbo Start, usually you want it refrigerated. So refrigerated Turbo Start, just because it's more concentrated, mm -hmm. you need to make sure there's not a whole lot of metabolic activity occurring in that bottle, mm -hmm. which at higher temperatures you're going to get that. Right because the seven is like a lower concentration, you're not gonna get as much metabolic activity. Okay. So those are able to store at room temperature. So turbo is like your turbo supercar. You wanna make sure that you take care of that one. So you'll be putting it in the, the fridge and everything and making sure it's nice and stable in there. Does it matter if the bottle's been opened or not? So we, we've done testing on open bottles. And matter of fact, I've got a shelf life study going right now where we have that that open process. So we're, we're looking at that and looking at the longevity of it. For the most part, as long as like the, you know, you got the cap, you're not just, the, you right. probably don't want to do that evaporate. anyway because <laughs> it starts coming out evaporate. in your refrigerator or whatever. But the, the actual, you know, just making sure the temperature is the most critical part of it. So opening, you know, it could decrease, you know, the shelf life a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in terms of it being stable, the temperature is like the most important thing for that turbo start. Well, the Fritzheim 7, if you do, okay, I opened it, I use some, I throw it in the fridge, will that increase the shelf life? Or do you guys still say, eh, 18 months is still pretty much what I was cooler? Or we, we go with the worst case scenario. Yeah. So we, we don't like market something sure. to where, oh yeah, hey, don't worry about it, you can do oh, this. Of course, and know? then, oh, I kept it for two years and I poured it in and yeah. Oh, my fish shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so two years, re man. Yeah, read the directions. Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Just when read the label. All else fails. The reason the label is there is yeah. quality control, and people like you have done this stuff, and yeah. you, you kind of work through the details there. So, All right, so it sounds like with the shelf life then, read the label, but yeah. it's, it's, it's a best by date, kind of like with your, with your food. Is it all the micros are magically going to go away? No. Okay. Uh, it's Once you hit like 18 months or whatever, they don't just die. Yeah. Uh, that That's kind of like the, the length of time that we've said, hey, we like, it's guaranteed for that, but we've had people that do some weird stuff to our product, like that open, close it and everything. They're, they're getting reports that, oh, okay, yeah, it works, it still works and everything. So it, they'll last beyond that, but it's one of those things where it's like, we know for a fact that right. it happens here. Going beyond that, it'll, well, it's still functioning. And then common sense is for the, Fritz Time 7 is not a super expensive product. And if you're starting up a new aquarium and you, you spend all this money on fish and your ecosystem, why wouldn't you just go and get a fresh bottle and just dump it in there, you know, yeah. or to the specifications, yeah. right? right? Well, Josh, thank you so much for being here. This yeah, was a great absolutely. conversation. And uh, thank you for having us out because I got to see some really cool stuff today. Yeah, so we you've got, got a, You've got a cool job. Yeah, right. There, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff going on, so yeah. we're, we're excited. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here. Hope you enjoyed nerding out a little bit about beneficial bacteria. We'll see you next week.